something about that first version, the voice sounds computerized. I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. Could it be possible the thing that got leaked was actually the reference song from a ghostwriter for Drake? DIY. DIY is it finally happened. Drake decided to allegedly, you're going to hear a lot of that word today, respond to Kendrick's missile viral moment of a verse isn't it crazy that all these stories we've been doing is all off of a verse by the way okay stop curtis you're sounding biased all of the like that verse that kendrick contributed to the metro booming and future project we don't trust you we finally get a response and there's some things about this response that we kind of expected when it dropped people went crazy oh my gosh they were going crazy but amongst all of this chaos, amongst all the craziness that was happening, people had questions, myself included, questions about the validity of if this is actually Drake. Really odd question to ask until you start hearing there's two different versions. One version is the first one we heard that for some odd reason, even though Drake has his own home recording studio, someone says that it was a leak. The crazy thing about it is this entire rollout has been somewhat ridiculous in that it's very different from any of the Drake diss rollouts we've seen before. Even when you're talking about Drake versus Meek Mill, Drake versus Common, there's artwork and there's a song and there's a name to go along with it. These songs go up on the DSPs. You're able to clarify, hey, this is in fact OVO produced music. This is straight from the source, Drake. This, however, was one of the first songs, diss songs, that was leaked in a really odd way. I don't know who the original person that had access to it. It was a few different people that I saw. The first one that I saw was an account on Twitter called Six Buzz TV. A lot of the different media outlets, major media outlets sourced this one. But I want you to listen to this and I want to walk you down my train of thought. Why I believe this diss song is at the very least suspicious and possibly AI from beginning to end. I'll explain my train of thought. Peep this out. This was the first track that got released, leaked. Now, I'm not going to play the entire song yet because this song actually got some people some copyright strikes, which is how some people thought, hey, it verifies that this is a real thing. This account, A-D-H-O-K-S-H-7, said that when they tried to upload the song through their phone on Twitter, this was flagged. Video is a copyright claim by Foundation Media LLC. Now, this is the first initial one that came out. That song, though, is slightly different from the next one that dropped, because I think that DJ Academics premiered it on his live stream. He was talking and in the midst of it. Someone sent him the real leak. People were on the Internet in 2024. Tell you how ridiculous this is saying that. Oh, no, no, no. That was a leak. This is the CDQ version. In 2024, people are saying this is the CDQ version. I could not believe my eyes and ears. We're talking leaks and CDQ versions from home studios. No, there's something fishy going on here. Now, when you listen to both the songs, you can make a great argument for how one of them sounds like a rough and the other one sounds like the mastered version. If you don't know anything about music, listen to this. There's a pitch shift that you can tell already from the beat. The beat hits a lot harder because you can actually hear it present. But let me continue. Interesting enough, this one has so much more energy in the production, also in the delivery. So when everybody was running around saying CDQ version, oh, no, 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 that, that was just a leaked version where, you know what I'm saying, he just didn't have as much energy. I did some extra research and I said something about that first version. The, the voice sounds really, really like laid back, methodical. It, it almost sounds computerized. Huh. Then the second one, I said, you know what? No, no, no. There's there's more nuance. There's more things going on here. Let me kind of let you see what I heard. All right. So what I did was I basically stemmed out. This is the most nerdiest thing ever. I stemmed out both the vocals for both versions just to listen to the vocals by themselves isolated because I was curious. I'm just curious. We're just doing journalism work. Here's the first version. And I want to see if you can hear what I hear as we play this one on top, which is the red. That's the first version. 
The second one is the re-recorded version. Listen to this. Look, I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside America for now. All right, that's one version of it. We're going to play a different parts of this. Here's the second version. This is the one that was re-recorded. Hey, I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside America for now. More energy, right? What's interesting is that you start to even notice that some of the lyrics are changing as you go through here. Listen to this. Hit maker, y'all depend on. Tough on record in my city, it was friend zone. You won't never take re recorded version. Maker, y'all depend on. Backstage in my city, it was friend zone. You won't. Interesting. Here's another portion to pay attention to a tonality switch. Peep this out. These top stage dry, you better drop and give a 50. Pip squeak pipe down, you ain't in no big three. Scissor got you. Okay, here's the re-recorded version. This is just me allegedly. This is this is just follow my train of thought. We need a verse for the Swifties. Top say drop, you better drop and give them fifty. Pip squeak pipe down, you ain't in no little pitch shift. Cool. I notice another lyric change here, and I'm gonna play these over the top of each other after we do this. Check it out. Top stage, I was turned. That was slick as hell. Lucky that your dog, little Ben, doesn't kiss and tell. Husband kisses man on stage. I was turned. That was slick as hell. Lucky that your dog, little Ben, doesn't kiss and tell. All right, check this out. Rolling loud stage, I would turn. That was slick as hell. Should have probably changed if it be him, start to kiss and tell. He had the chip and nail gun. Boy, don't make me at the chip and nail. Rolling loud stage, I would turn. Are you... So, obviously, these are two different versions. You can tell that by the production. You can tell that by the energy and the lyrics. This is when I started to ask the question, is the first verse actually AI? Now, there's a whole lot of holes in that argument at first because you're like, wait, does AI sound this good now? I don't know the versions that you've heard of these voice cloners of different artists. They've done very popular ones of like, of course, Kendrick, of course, Drake and other 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 artists. But you can always hear like the way they transition between words. It sounds really, really like computerized. It sounds fake. It sounds unnatural. But you're hearing breathing and all these different things going on here. So I was like, either it's not AI or maybe AI got to upgrade. I'll present that to you after this. One more time. But that be busting out the gritty. I know why you mad, nigga. I ain't even tripping. I ain't even rapping after this. I'm way too busy. But Interesting. Listen to this. The gritty. We know why you mad, nigga. I ain't even tripping. All that little heartbroken Twitter shit for bitches. This far the top dog drop and give me fit. Drop. I know why you mad, nigga. I ain't even tripping. I ain't even rapping after this. I'm way too busy. This far the top dogs drop and give me fit. Drop. Now, the thing that makes it sus to me is that there's a good argument for it not being AI only because you don't really get to hear breaths with AI. You notice that? Like you don't really hear the clone voice having breaths and whatnot. So I started to dig a little bit deeper, right? And, and just to kind of show you, I wasn't the only one that felt this way. Like there's folks here that date back as early as yesterday and, and all throughout the dates that are saying, hey, this Kendrick versus Drake battle was going to turn into something it wasn't supposed to be if we keep getting AI disc records. This person says, hope that Drizzy Drake is AI. <laughs> hope that Drizzy Drake diss is AI is what they're saying, right? Another Drake diss or AI? People are asking this question, rightfully so, because that doesn't sound like the same energy you get from a Drake. Hell, even I had my questions, ladies and gentlemen. Question I had was, I don't know, fam. That first version of the Drake diss song sound like an AI reference track. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Interesting enough, it started to make me think, are we possibly in a time where the Ghost Riders of yesterday because if you didn't see, uh, there was another leaked ghostwriting record where someone supposedly leaked a version of Little Yachty doing uh, a Drake song, word for word, flow and all that. And this is really more so for those of you that don't understand the necessity of reference tracks. Check this out. For those of you that don't know, typically reference tracks are created as a demo that you send off to an artist that has plans of re-recording it, slightly altering some of the lyrics along the way so that it feels like more like something they wrote. It feels more personalized. But usually these people would be the writers of this original song and they will be the ones that inspire, if not the majority, at least they start off the vibe, as the kids like to say. So it's really peculiar that this comes out around the same time as that first diss song. 
So my brain started going like down this rabbit hole. I was like, Man. could it be possible the thing that got leaked was actually the reference song from a ghostwriter for Drake? Nah, 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 nah. You being a hater, Curtis. It, it, man. Plus, it, there's too much nuance to it, right? That's got to be Drake. I put out this thought and someone asked me, they said, uh, nah, 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 Curtis, there's no way that this was AI because the disses on the song were too personal. And so I told him, I said, it's not my theory if AI wrote it, but whether if AI was used to cover up who did contribute to it. Once your pen as a lyricist is in question, it's always in question. Then in the midst of me going through all these different comments, this was some shit that really got me thinking and down a deep rabbit hole. I'd like to introduce you to Derek King music just to kind of give you an idea of the advancement of AI voice cloning. I want you to check this out. I keep a good time in the whip when you're ready to play. Let me know we can rock out. Tired of spam, you niggas. I see you in traffic. Just know we gon' hop out. Hitting your bitch from the back. She in love with it. Too much dick. I make a tap out. I like them nasty. Fuck me with passion. Ratchet bitch. I pull a track out. Good time to whip when you're ready to play. Let me know we can rock out. Tired of spam, you niggas. I see you in traffic, just know we gon' hop out. Hitting your bitch from the bed, she in love with it. Too much dick, I make a tap out. I like them nasty, fuck me with passion. Ratchet, bitch, I pull a track out. Put on that Gucci with Prada. Whole fit cost me around 100k. Bitch, call me dad, I'm a father. She know a rich nigga having his way. Can think that a nigga is sweet. Like two fingers, I get the up and the peace. I switch out my hoes up the week. This raises questions. It doesn't kill the argument. This raises questions of people who are saying, well, it can't be AI because you hear the breathing, you hear all the nuance, and the things that only a human being can do. He just showed you right now. He created a verse in the style of the baby. Then he ran it through voicestars.co, uploaded it, and was able to bring it back to what looks like a program called BandLab, and then literally put the voice clone over the top of a beat, and it sounds damn near identical to the baby. Uh, fam. This is not proving anything except for that yesterday's AI is not today's AI. This is merely bringing up some much needed questions. Drake has not stood by the diss song. Now, there have been people who have used DJ Academics live stream and him texting back and forth and saying, no, no, they're claiming it. They're claiming it. But there's other theories out here because Drake wasn't the only one that released a diss song within the last few weeks. Matter of fact, he released two diss songs. Listen to this. This one's called High Whitney. Niggas try to rekindle their careers off my child. No, let's talk about it. I'm about to push all the buttons, push they keep that, push the teeth out. Now, mind you, part of the reason why the quality is so bad, this was re-recorded off of a DJ Academics live stream where he got the he 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 had access to it or something. He found it online and he's playing it through his speakers, and now someone's recording this off of their screen. <laughs> So that one's called High Whitney, where he goes on to even, I mean, the, the person who created this, which, oh, if you didn't know that, it, it wasn't Drake. <laughs> If we're going to trust confirmations, we got to hear confirmations once again from this source, right? Shout out to academics. Someone clipped this also from this for another stream of DJ Academics where he confirms the new Drake diss High Whitney is AI and the sources, as it says here, Drake. He did, he did hit me. He hit me. Uh, how long ago? Yeah, he hit me an hour ago. Wow. We're fucking late. And I guess when that, I was playing that that High Whitney shit, he said that's AI. He said 100% AI. I'm gonna take his word, but I ain't gonna lie to you. That shit is slick. Yo, Drake, I ain't gonna lie. You might wanna like that's that's really the Drake bag I want him to get into. It's it's not necessarily that track. That's the bag I want him to get into. The slick talk, but direct talk over some smooth beat, like yo. So that wasn't the only diss song that dropped this week. Sometimes the comeback is quieter than the exit. Extended warranty isn't just another album drop. It's the sound of dedication crafted right here in the heart of my home. It's where I rap, produce, mix, master, and even perform shows. It's kind of like my personal Amazon for art directly to you. In extended warranty, every track, especially favorites like I told my wife. I haven't told my wife I want to rap again. Huh. 
Stan is a chapter of renewal at 39 years of age. This, of course, is my promise to you, this craft, after sharing nine years of knowledge on YouTube. Now I'm channeling all that energy back into music. And as you know, this means no streaming platforms, just us. And to my supporters, this music, this vision, this success, it's alive because of you. Here's to the art that fuels us, the journeys we share, and the revolution that is just getting started. Get your exclusive copy of Extended Warranty at CurtisKing.com. Matter of fact, a Kendrick Lamar diss song dropped, a response to the AI, which I'm calling it AI. This one, however, someone put a name to it. I think it's uh, Synth the Rapper. He actually showed you how he made his AI diss response back to Drake. What are we doing? Like, I'm saying this out loud. I'm at, what the hell are we doing? Yo, 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 Sai the Rapper here, and this is how I created the viral AI Kendrick Lamar diss track. Out of my name, three times in front of your mirror. You hesitate to proceed after you reconsider. Lights flick if the energy in a room shifted. Scared to open your eyes, cause you feeling the ghost of Kendrick. Now first you gotta get a beat that sound like chaos and the world is ending. So this is a beat that I cooked up. He hit that keyboard hard as hell. That shit got some endurance. And you gotta write some lyrics and spit them the way that K Dot would write them and spit them. Utter my name three times in front of your mirror. You have to take them proceed after you reconsider. I know Kendrick Lamar likes to emphasize his T's. Party. He can T. -t party. So we gotta incorporate that. Grab your Glocks when you see K Dot. See that hard T I was telling y'all about? Dot. Most people just say dot, he dot. As but not least, I gotta put my beat tag on it. Now let's listen to how the finished result sound. Now this song is viral on YouTube, it's called One Shot. I ain't gonna lie, I shocked myself. I thought it was gonna sound fake. I thought people was gonna be able to tell it was fake. People think it's actually real. So I just wanna come out for the record and say that it's AI. That's not Kendrick's response. I know Kendrick gonna come harder than that. I just couldn't get too disrespectful because I ain't in a beef, you feel me? Ain't nobody diss me. It's actually funny. I seen Drake heard it and commented. <laughs> he laughed. This is partly funny, but then this is partly concerning for me as a hip hop fan because once again, I've been on record in other videos where I was like, I wasn't looking forward to this Drake versus Kendrick because I, I, I personally bias, whatever, I'll take that. I don't see Drake as a traditional lyricist. I see him as a supremely successful pop act that has made a, a lot of huge strides within the hip hop culture, right? There's no denying his impact. There have never been this many singing ass niggas on hooks because of him, right? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to give the props where props are due. However, I wasn't interested in so I wasn't interested in it because it's less about Drake for me and more about the people that power his machine. His relationship with UMG concerned me. It concerned me a lot when it comes to situations like this, because we know that both of these artists, Kendrick and Drake, have been sending subs over the last 10 plus years. This is what the people want to see, especially after a year in which hip hop took a bit of a dip. This right now is looking like it's getting ready to put hip hop right back in its rightful position. There's a lot of money to be made, a lot of interest that goes beyond just our interest as hip hop and lyricist fans, battling fans. This is my theory. I feel like whether it was done strategically or whether it was an actual leak, that first version we had we heard was a ghostwriter, allegedly, that recorded that version because it sounded so monotone. I played you the acapellas back and forth. It sounded so computerized. That was the reference so that nobody could ever pull that as a card out and say, hey, look, he's even using a ghostwriter for, for his references. That was where my, my brain went. And then the second song, I think that that was either re-recorded or that was, in fact, just a better draft. Now, I told you earlier this is bigger than just a Kendrick Lamar and Drake especially when you start getting companies like Universal involved. This is a theory that Joe Button put out there, and I got a few articles to back it up. Articles that even reach back to videos we did 11 months ago. It's gonna get really interesting. Check this out. And if my plan involved AI, I would want to test. I would run a very sophisticated test. And because I fired everybody, that means I need my big boy acts to be not only as big as they were, but even bigger now. Hmm. How do I do that? One thing war does besides get people killed is make some money. Generate revenue. Mm -hmm. So the theory 
in essence, is that this could be something more of the doing. If we go down this theory of this being these being AI diss songs, right, which I think I've given you enough sufficient evidence just to question, right? Can't make these accusations without having some sound, sound information. I think that also if we go further with this, this poses a few different opportunities for Drake in his position because nobody in this war of words between a Kendrick and a Drake want to lose their positioning or momentum in a game that they look to be generational income or impactful for both of their lives. Nobody wants to lose, especially not lose their lives. We're not even in that era. Nobody wants to lose the success of their businesses and the reputation being tarnished by something like this. So there's one theory that these songs are merely test runs right? They're soft launches so that when the people hear them, Drake and the team can say, look, look at the way they're reacting to that. Or if the people say, oh, this shit is trash. Oh, it's AI. That's one theory. However, Joe brings a whole nother fold to this that could it be possible that this is just not a test run for Drake versus Kendrick, which is just one moment. But could this be a test run for Universal Music? Universal Music, who, if you did not know, has a pretty damn good relationship with Drake. Not only is Drake underneath UMG, but maybe some of y'all saw this back in 2022, May 3rd. Drake struck a deal, massive deal. Some have rumored to be over $390 million, a multifaceted deal with Universal Music Group. Why does Universal get brought up in this conversation? Well, Joe already said there's money to be made in this, in this entire ordeal. It'll last further than just the moment of Drake versus Kendrick. I started digging even deeper, even went to some of my old reaction videos. Remember this article from 4-12-2023, when you started getting those AI Drake songs popping up. One of them was supremely, supremely viral, and it was made by the guy with the ghost uniform, the, the, the ghost writer guy. Universal was very aggressive about getting these songs taken down because they own so much of the music that was out there. Uh, I think Eminem was another artist. They were they were very aggressive about making sure these songs were pulled down. Matter of fact, this article title reads Universal Music is asking streaming services to block AI companies from accessing its songs. I'm assuming in hopes of the songs training the AI. Initially, when I saw this, I said maybe they just want to get ahead of it so that they can make the money off of it that they think that they deserve. Interesting enough, later that year, Universal and Google reportedly were in a licensing talk about AI voice cloning. And we heard very little about what that meeting produced. Wouldn't it be a hell of a rollout when all eyes are on two of the biggest artist names in hip hop? Wouldn't it be a hell of a rollout if you could test more, if you could test it during that period? I went over to that website that I showed you earlier where the guy was imitating the, the baby ver verse and he was imitating SZA. It's called voicestars.co. Let's go full screen on this one. So voicestars.co says here in their actual headline, transform your voice, make it stars. Select an AI voice, upload your track and generate the perfect AI cover. And if you look down here to the bottom left, look who's the number one trending AI voice right now. AI Drake. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. I call disgusting work on all of this. They think we're stupid. They think we're stupid. The fact that we're having conversations about CDQ versions in a in a predominantly streaming era, the fact that they're trying to convince people that the mastering process includes, because they're saying this is a mastered version of the Drake song that he still has not stood by. It's always, there's been rumblings of people that have said, oh yeah, yeah, that is, that is, it is. But there's not an official claim of it. Not that it would matter so much now, the impact has already been felt. Folks have already called for Kendrick to respond back. But I'm starting to ask, wait, is he on the clock or is Drake still on the clock? Until you officially stand by your diss song, what are we doing here? This is why I said in the last video about the J. Cole apology. Him apologizing was such a big move for hip hop. Big move for him. Salute to him. But there's a part of us that are hip hop fans, myself that is a hip hop fan and looks at that and says, that was the last battle that interests me. This is Drake versus Kendrick. Just seeing how petty the back and forth. You see Rick Ross inserted himself into this conversation. I didn't even want to cover that because it got so petty between Insta stories. This is what I was not looking forward to. I want to hear some bars, but we're in the social media age. We're in the reality TV age. We're in the, oh my God, did you see what he said about his wife? Like we're in that age now. 
and there's a lot of people who are here and ready for it. I still stand by the 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 idea that people don't want to see these folks get killed. I don't think that's what is on the table, but I do think they want to see their reputations bleed. However, I would hesitate to be as excited about seeing the death of a reputation, death of a business, when you know that there's someone who can sit back like a universal that has hands in both of these artists' careers. Kendrick, at one point in time, his last project, even with PG Lang, was in association with Interscope. Drake, OVO, is also underneath the umbrella of Universal. And as you can see, that's one of their bigger poster childs that they truck a deal with. They benefit from it. You know what's funny? Kanye West versus 50 Cent. That was also a win for Universal. Who won that? Universal Music won that. It's a lot of things here that I think that if you're a fan of either one of these artists, you're going to already say, I, I don't care what you're talking about, Curtis. I, I just feel like whoever won, whoever my, my dog is, that's who won. Doesn't matter. I want you to really do as much research as you can. If this is something that interests you and if it's questionable, question it. Those are my thoughts, though, DIYers. You let me know what you think. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.